Hey everyone, I want to share with you a few thoughts this morning. As we get ready to post this video, pretty much the first video in a week and a half or so, so I apologize about that. Things have been, of course, pretty crazy, some new developments in our family life, and I'm still finding out that my agenda is not God's agenda. And even though I make plans and have schedules and have desires, uh, the Holy Spirit oftentimes likes to move in a different direction, and many things are outside of my control. So, though I'd like to make two or three of these videos a week, last week I don't think I posted a single one, but God has given me the opportunity to share a few things here this morning. You know, I've tried to do some reading, kind of keep up with what's going on in the nation. And of course, everybody has an opinion. There's very strong emotions out there. One of the emotions that I'm not feeling is anger, hatred, irritation, bitterness. I don't feel upset at all. I don't feel any, any angry. I mean, any anger at all. And uh, I think that's primarily because, as I referenced in last Sunday's message, I really see everything that happens in the world through the context of a spiritual battle. So there's a spiritual battle that's going on at the foundational level. And then the, the fruits of that, kind of at the surface level, the tip of the iceberg above the water, the 10% above the water, we see in a physical type battle between human pawns, when the reality is 90% of the iceberg is below the water and the, the, the true battle, the true issue is happening in spiritual terms in the realm that we necessarily cannot, cannot see and that many people are not aware of. And so on one side you have Satan and he is called the father of lies in John. He's the worker of violence, of hatred, of murder, of destruction. And then on the other side you have God and such such words as truth, love, kindness, forgiveness, grace kind of come to mind. Now there's a there's a battle going on and the ultimate the ultimate battle is for the hearts of people, for the souls of people. So Satan is interjecting his influence and God is recruiting individuals so that he may influence people for good. But Satan really has the upper hand, and here's why. Number one, uh, Satan is pretty, pretty militant about his activities, and he doesn't play by the rules. So in terms of the Geneva Convention among armies of the world, you know, there's a number of, of, of terrorist groups that do not hold to the same rules of engagement that Americans do. So they automatically have the upper hand because the rules of engagement are different. Satan's ruthless in that category. And secondly, every single human being has a fallen nature. So automatically it puts them in Satan's category by default. The only way you can get the God's category is to be born again and then be surrendered and be willing to be used of God for truth and for goodness. So Satan has the upper hand here by far, he's called the, the ruler, the God of this world. And Jesus is basically leading an invasion force. And Jesus says you ought to expect a lot of suffering, a lot of pain, a lot of trial and tribulation in order to enter the kingdom of God. Now, I'm very much aware and I like statistics. I like numbers. So I just refresh on a couple, couple things here, but by and large, across the board, statistics are pretty much the same. Just reading, um, I'm going to read from a few studies here, and I'll mention the study and give you some give you some numbers. But by and large, what I'm seeing is that the younger generations, let's just say 30, 40, and below, are almost overwhelmingly uh, fighting on the side of of Satan, fighting on on the side of the enemy. Um, I, I I see a drastic absence of truth. Uh, there's a heavy amount of indoctrination, which is coming from the media, which is coming from education, which is coming from Hollywood. Let me just share with you. Okay, these are facts. These are statistics. 
2018 study by the National Association of Scholars found that in the top liberal arts colleges, top ones in the country, 40% of the top liberal arts colleges in the country had not a single Republican professor in the entire school. Not one singer, single Republican professor. All overwhelmingly skewed toward liberalism, socialism, and further down the line. A Luntz research polling firm found that, uh, again, colleges 57% emphatically identified as Democrat, only 3% as Republican, 64% as liberal, only 6% as conservative. Um, Researcher Samuel Adams with the Hoover Institute found that the ratio all across the board on a national level between college professors of liberal persuasion and conservative persuasion was on a national level six to one. But there were many places in the country like New England where that ratio was across the board considering all colleges 28 to 1, 28 to 1. So uh, here's one more. The American uh, sociologist did a study, 480 sociology professor, professors. They found that only 2% of the sociology professors were conservative. 2%. And that over 20% identified as Marxist. They were radical. <laughs> so that's that's so what I'm saying is this is when it comes to one of the reasons for why we see what we see today is education. And Satan is militant about educating his soldiers, whether they are aware that they're being used by Satan or not, doesn't matter. But he's he is militant in educating his infantry with, with lies. Um, and he is skewing them and he has taken over the education system by and large in America that is heavily favored toward a lack of biblical, absolute moral truth and value. I mean, and that slide has, has been going on for decades now. Throw out the Ten Commandments. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not covet what belongs to someone else. Um, then basically the rule of law is thrown out and people can do whatever they want. Well, being an ex-soldier, I mean, I can tell you that war is really messy and it's painful and there's lots of suffering and there's loss. Um, so thinking about this spiritual war that exists between Satan and between Jesus, uh, Satan's ruthless. Uh, again, he, he doesn't fight by the same rules. His rules are completely different than the rules that Jesus, the guidelines that Jesus set down in terms of the advancement of his kingdom. Satan uses violence. Jesus uses forgiveness, love, peace, and truth. And I think one of the reasons why we're where we're at today, going back to this whole issue of education, is that many Americans, and this is, I don't blame them. I mean, this is kind of what our country was founded upon. We have this supreme desire to be comfortable. We, we want to just be prosperous. We want to live at peace. We want to be comfortable. Um, and with that comes apathy. With that comes kind of a laziness. And Satan, on the other hand, he is offensive. He takes the initiative. He, he doesn't stop. He, he, his desire is not comfort. That's, that's never his objective. So when you take a civilization that basically um, prioritizes, admires, you know, holds up one of its pillars is comfort um, and peace, prosperity. And then you take a civilization or a people group who prioritize an attitude of, of militancy um, and I, I'm, I mean, I'm I sh unashamedly since I've spent a lot of time studying the Islamic Muslim background, uh, it's predicated, it's founded upon 
we, we are one world government. We've got to take over the entire world. We're not going to stop until that takes place. And to use any, any means possible, including violence, in order to make that happen. So that is Satan's nature. He will not stop. He's militant in his efforts. And the reality is that previous generations and even current generations are guilty. Believers are guilty of prioritizing comfort over engaging in warfare because a warfare is difficult. It's messy. I mean, there's loss, there's sacrifice, there is suffering. Um, but that's what Jesus calls us to. When I read the Bible, that's, that's the conclusion I come to based upon my reading of the word. We are called to engage culture and to do so with truth, to do so with love, according to the rules of engagement that Jesus and the, and the boundaries, the guidelines that Jesus set forth. But Satan is ruthlessly working to oppose that. And of course, he's got the upper hand out of default. The human heart, the sinful heart falls on his side out of default. So he's got the majority there's a minority on the Christian side, but that doesn't mean we, we don't give up. My ultimate security is not found here in this world. I know. I, I don't expect to live to old age. I don't expect it. I'm confident I won't. And I, I am I'm looking forward to, and I, I fully expect tremendous suffering. I, I expect perhaps the loss of my life, the loss of the lives of, of some, or if not all of my children or family members in the months, years to come. Uh, for the cause of Christ. I mean, that's what's happened for thousands of years. So we just happen to live in a short window of time as Americans in which peace, prosperity, that has been unprecedented in the history of the world, has been enjoyed by those who are 80 and, 80 and below. And I, I think that's going to come to an end. Now, I still have hope that God can bring revival. Um, I, I I, I do. I mean, I know the power of God, but I also know the power of Satan and of human nature. And God's not going to do anything apart from the free will of human beings. There's one, one passage, one verse that came to mind this morning, and I'll close on this. It's in Isaiah chapter 7. Um, Isaiah goes to Ahab, who's the king, and Ahab's in a very difficult set of circumstances. Where if you look at the circumstances, there's a lot of room for fear and worry. And he basically says, Isaiah says this, God, God's willing to really work in this situation, but you've got to trust him. He says, if you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. Your legs will be swept right out from under you. So ultimately... The, the firmness of my stance is going to be centered upon Jesus Christ and the truth. That's where my security is coming from. And because we're in a battle, there is this challenge. There's this encouragement. There's this exhortation that we must stand firm. We must stand firm. We must engage in the fight. Engage in the fight. That's the calling for today. That's the operating system in which I'm going with uh, on a daily basis, mentally, in my mind, as a believer. And as a pastor, and that's the, the very mentality and the attitude that I want to pass on to you today.